my offensive and defensive ebooks are now available over on HotRock.Tips. If you guys are looking to win more games than Madden 20, that's the place to be. And don't forget, use code CHAOS for 10% off at checkout. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another Chaos Coaching video. First off, I just want to wish you guys a happy holidays. I hope you guys got to spend time with family members, friends, loved ones. No matter what you celebrate, it's always important. And unfortunately, today, you guys get to spend some time with me. So first off, if you guys haven't seen these videos before, Chaos Coaching is a little bit different than the rest of the videos on our channel. Less edited, a lot more raw, ga raw gameplay. And they're a little bit longer because I'm talking a lot and I'm breaking down what it is that I'm thinking, what it is that I'm doing on the field, no matter what it is. Coverage adjustments, play calling, etc. So... A little bit longer of a video today. There's a few things I want to get through. A few important things that I feel are important to you guys to help you guys win. So I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you guys timestamps. If you guys just want to get to the gameplay, I'll have them in there for you guys. It's in the description. But if not, stick around for a little bit of the announcements and we'll get into the game. But first, for those of you who aren't aware, we're actually conducting a sale over on HotRod.Tips right now. I'll have the word above me and in the description below. It is Christmas 30. If you guys use that code, you guys can get 30% off right now. And I just want to break down for you guys kind of what an ebook looks like. On our site so this is if you're a member this is the members page you see with all the different ebooks if you click on this page I'm gonna walk you through all the things that we offer guys it's not just money plays right it's not just simple tips and blitzes it's it's more teaching you guys how to be good at Madden it breaks down a lot more than that you guys see here across the menu we have a bunch of different things we have the intro we have miscellaneous which is gonna be your audibles your subs your personnel all that stuff we have our philosophy if it's a defense, how often are we blitzing? How often are we playing coverage? Uh, if we're playing a runner, what do we like to do? That's our philosophy. We have, we have, and then we have a bunch of different breakdowns, right? So we have nickel normal, big dime, and this is just one. This is just one of our nine different eBooks, and these get updated. This one was more recently updated, but we're just scrolling through all the different content, guys. There's write-ups, there's video. These are all toggles, so like you can see, I can click it for more info. Um, and I'll actually just give you guys, I'll give you guys a free one right here. Just this three-man shed. This is what it looks like. We have a write-up. We have a picture. And then we have a video so every toggle is going to have different like pictures of the setups videos write-ups guys it's very in-depth and it's more and like i said it's more than just a blitz it's more than just a money play guys it's teaching you guys how to play madden it helps you guys to get better it's not like every other youtube tip that you're going to see out there where it's like here's this great play this is the setup and they just run it a bunch of times against a bunch of different things and they never show you why it works or teach you guys the in-depth reasoning for why they are doing the certain hot routes and stuff right so that's it for the site i just wanted to go over this for you guys if you guys are interested in that christmas 30 at checkout you guys can get 30 percent off now i just finished plugging for you guys but i want to give you guys a free tip to help you guys get started today so you guys might have a favorite formation in madden on offense that you guys don't even realize get better so you guys know i use split close all the time actually in pat's book to show you guys this but you guys know i use miami Split close is just one of the few formations where you guys can get it better get a better personnel out there to help you guys get some more speed so for split close here i'm going to break it down i'm going to do a four, few formations but in split close you can go to the strong slot and then your tight end is going to go to the left but the left is normally a wide receiver spot so you can sub in a wide receiver here and now i'll actually have three wide receivers when i come out of the set and i'll call the play just so you guys can see that but also another example would be a uh, y why off trips pads aka u trips so another one that you can do for this is the um fullback wing so when you do the fullback wing package, but you have a running back starting at fullback, you can easily just change that in your depth chart. You get a running back at tight end. This gives you more extra speed. Usually, especially in Mutt, you have tight ends with like 79, 80 speed. Just won't cut it. You can get a running back there. The new Bo Jackson just came out. You can get 99 speed Bo Jackson at tight end. How crazy is that? You throw it to him in the flats, you're stiff arming, you're juking. It helps you guys a ton. So there's different things that you guys can do. Go to your formation. See if you can find a, a package that gets a fullback at tight end so that you can put a running back there. Find a package that you can get a wide receiver in for a tight end like you can in split close with a strong slot. Go check those things out and, and see what you guys can do to help improve your formations. Having more speed is always pretty much always better unless you're in the red zone trying to run the ball. So you guys see here we actually have three wide receivers, uh, Watkins, Hill, and Robinson, whereas we would have had we would have had a tight end there if we didn't do that package. So just something to help you guys, just a quick tip. Uh, that's split close, that's why off pass. I can't do them all. Go check your formations out. Go see what you guys use. See if you can change the personnel. And then it also helps you because you can audible. So in split close, I have a tight end set. So I can audible down to I form and strong, but I still have three wide receivers. So it's it's really benefit, really beneficial thing you guys can do. I hope you guys will use it to your advantage. Now let's get over to the last tip to help you guys get better going into the game. Just pre precursors to, to success. And then we'll get into the game. The last important aspect before going into a Madden game, guys, is having the best possible lineup you guys can have. 
Now, you guys saw the title. You guys already know I have 99 speed Bo Jackson, who gets that just with having two, plus two from Sprinter and plus one from John Madden. I also have 99 speed Randy Moss. I was able to do that with the John Madden and Sprinter, plus having 25 different Viking players on my team. Now, of course, the Team Diamonds. Someone flew this in to me from Twitter, but the Team Diamonds get plus three and the Team Builders get plus two. So I was able to get about 20 Vikings players, just put them as backups. You guys see, like, we have Thielen here and get Randy Moss to 99 speed. This is probably the best team that I've had all year. I'm super excited to use it. I've actually had a little bit lower tiered of a team for the most like for the past like couple months. Uh, but we have a decent O line now. We have Bo Jackson and Eric Dickerson, who's actually our X Factor. If you guys have Bo Jackson, that's great, guys. He's gonna be really, really good. But if you have Eric Dickerson, he's gonna still be a little bit better, probably because of his X Factor. That freight train is really good that he starts off with. But we have uh Tory Holden, Brandon Cooks. I still want to power him up all the way. I need to grind out my levels. I've been lazy with that, but. We also have Calvin Johnson, Sean Taylor. Let me get these pictures back. I hate when the pictures aren't here, but uh, our defense is looking so juiced. I love RDB. So we have Calvin. We have Sean T. I'm just holding him until his power-up comes out. When his power comes out, he's going to be the absolute best safety in the game. He's going to have 97 speed. He's going to get secure tackler, enforcer, and zone out. So he's going to play incredible on his own and while you're using him. But he's going to be a really good player. Calvin Johnson's always great. Ed Reed, Pat Tillman. And Lawrence Taylor, guys, if you guys don't have this Lawrence Taylor, he's so good. He's so versatile. So whenever they're in a pass formation, he is my pass rusher. I have pass rusher lead on him. But whenever they're in a, a, a run set, I'll have him as my best run stopping linebacker, whoever I think is going to play the run the best. And he's going to have secure tackle and unfakeable. So he's going to make tackles for you. He's very, very versatile. So I love him a lot. We upgraded our DBs. We have we have legends. We have legends everywhere. We have Dion, Night Train, Mel Blunt. Rob Woodson. So super excited to use this. I'm super excited to use our team. Here's our quickly over our X factors. We have Pat Tillman, Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White. Now, Pat Tillman will be replaced from Sean Taylor as soon as he gets a power up. He's not worth it yet, but if once he gets one, he's going to be the best. So, and then we have Randy Moss. Of course, you want to start off with Moss 100, Bazooka, Patrick Mahomes, and Eric Dickerson with Freight Train. Now we have uh, Dashing Dead Eye, Escape Artist, and Last Ditch on Patrick Mahomes. That's it for the team. Oh, don't let me forget. Don't let me forget. I want to go over here real quick. My bad, my bad. Here's the playbooks. You guys always want to see the playbooks. We have Dolphins offense, Dolphins defense. You guys know we just uh we just we just came out with our Dolphins defense, and I'm going to be updating our Dolphins offense within the next few days. Uh, probably by the 28th or 29th, you guys will have an update to the offense. So that's two ebooks that we just came out with. Basically, that's it for the team, man. Let's get into the game. All right, what's he looking like? What's he looking like? That's us, I think. I'm pretty sure that's actually no. I don't have Calvin activated, so that's him. Dang, he's got the new bow. All right, I always like to look at the top three, guys. It's always important to know what they have. If you see a running back in the top three, you know they probably want to run the ball a good amount, so you have to be ready for it. Opening kickoff, you always want to kick off first, guys. If you guys go into your settings, setting it to kick is important, and then having your second option against the win. So in case you don't win the toss, you have the win for you when you're kicking your game, when you field goals in the fourth quarter. Now, you always want to set, set your team to those spots that you want them. Do your substitutions, making sure you have your... If you don't put your guys in position to win... You're going to struggle. So I, I like to make subs around the board, making sure I have all the players I want them to make this. So you guys saw I moved LT away. That's my run defensive spot. I want him to be able to stop the run from right there. And then in 146, making sure you have your fast DBs in the slot to man them up and for blitzing. And uh, making sure you guys, you have your best zone guys on the outside because that's usually where you'll keep zones. And we're all set up here. He's coming out on the gun bunch. So everything that you need to worry about right away, deep corner. That's the first one. It's very important to note what important things, that you, like what the, what the most common things that someone can do out of their popular formation, right? So he's in gun bunch, so you know that he has a uh, deep corner. He's got mesh post. He's got stick. Uh, just noting the best plays that he has. And then you know he has Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to spy him first play, right? Making sure that I take away his running and make him actually pass the ball. Now he's doing a whole bunch of hot routes. So he's probably going to run the ball. He's doing too many hot routes for it to be a pass, I feel like. Oh, he's actually passing. Let's, let's see. Ooh. I think that was deep corner. That looked like deep corner first play. He motioned out a streak at the deep end on the backside. Just keep continuing to note what he likes to do these first couple drives they're always feel out drives so you don't know what your opponent's going to do going into a game right everyone's different now they might have similar formations but at the end of the day they might be very different than than the someone else that they might play so you got to feel out what they're doing note what they like to do on first downs and then on third and uh third and fourth downs noting what their what their best plays are they're going to put their best plays on a play where they need to convert a first down right so just noting those things and keeping them in your back pocket for later so right here he goes to verticals got nothing really open we're going to take it away we're actually getting some decent pressure. Our guys are shedding right now for us. He's not standing tall in the pocket. And it's, and it's hurting him because we have a spy out there too. Now, I've called the same coverage back-to-back -back plays. I'm going to mix it up right here. He, he's probably on to me that I was running that cover two. Now, I'm going to mix it up. Just call a cover three and give him a different look to just kind of keep him on his toes. I'm lurking the right side. I know the flat's open, so I know the flat's mine. 
Nothing really there. Oh, we got to pick that. We have to pick that. That's good D, though. I'm happy with the way we're playing right now. I knew the flat was my assignment. Uh, if, if you guys take off a zone, either blitz them, put them in a different zone, etc. Know where you need to cover in order to be successful, right? So I took off my purple on that play. So I knew I had to lurk the purple myself. It's just, it's just like, of course, like it, it makes perfect sense. Why wouldn't you lurk the area that you know is going to be open? Sometimes people would just lurk an area that they already have a zone at and it's pointless for them. Oh, we got, we got pressure, baby. This guy's not standing very tall back there and we're on to him. Now back in offense, guys, making sure you just set your audibles. So very important to set your audibles. There's no reason not to. Um, you never know if you're going to call the wrong play and you're, wanna go, you're going to want to go to something else. So why not have those plays in your back pocket so that you can just audible to them instead of having to blow a timeout or getting a bad play out there. You don't want to ever put a bad play that you don't want out there. Take a sack, waste it down, etc. There's no reason for that. Now I'm just going to run the ball here. I'm actually going to flip to see if he'll flip with me. And he didn't. So I'm running the ball to the weak side here. It's a nickel, it's a nickel formation for him. And he's got a, yeah, oh, it's a nickel formation. So if it's a nickel formation, they're going to, um, they're going to have the one nickel on the one side, but if they don't flip, that's going to be a weak side, right? Cause they only have one corner on the one side and then they have, uh, they just have the linebackers. So a nickel set. I always like to flip, see if they'll flip with me. If they do good for them. Oh my goodness gracious. Good blocking out there, Eric. Now those runs weren't very successful, but the fact of the matter is I did notice he's not going to flip with me. So it's important to note that, uh, that he's not going to do that. So I'll be able to run the ball probably later. It'd be nicer to run the ball with Eric Dickerson, not Bo Jackson, since he's uh, since he's the guy that's lit up. But at the end of the day, it's not going to really matter. I think I'm going to have success doing that. If he's not going to flip his nickels with me, that's cool. Uh, there's something I'm noting. Like I said, early drives, picking up on what your opponent wants to do is really important for later on in the game when you know you need to clock. Like So now I need to know if I need to clock out, I'll probably be able to have success running the ball, whether it's audibling down to a stretch to that right or it's just staying in that power O and getting some better blocking. Either or, it's something I have in, my, in the back of my mind now, just noting things. So I know he likes deep corner, and I know he doesn't flip his formation when I when I flip mine. So that's two things I've already noted from those first couple of possessions. Now, this guy struggled with a couple of the coverages that I put out there last possession, so I'm not going to change anything up. There's no reason to change anything from what we were doing, simply because we had success with it. We were stopping his passes, right? He was struggling. We got a couple, uh, I think we got a sack and we forced a couple throwaways. So if we're if he's struggling with the coverages that we're putting out there, why change it? There's no reason to like, yes, maybe mix up your like your coverage looks a little bit, but there's no reason to, to change up really like from the cover two and the cover three until he shows he can beat it. And then once he shows he can beat it, okay, then we'll switch. We'll, and we'll switch up, man. We're freaking getting after him right now. And I'm really happy about it. We're playing really, really well. I like where we're at right now. I'm gonna play safe again, mixing up my coverages again, not giving him this deep bomb. I'm going to take away the deep corner. So I'm going to take away deep corner by taking away the middle with my zones and lurking this corner out myself. This corner out is very, very tough to guard. We're just getting after him, guys. I mean, I know I'm talking a lot. He's Oh, don't quit, dude. Come on. Come on, man. Don't do it. Oh, he quit. I'm actually a little bit glad that he quit because I didn't, I didn't get to use my moss. So I stopped him inside the red zone. So I didn't get to use my 50 plus uh, yard moss. So that's okay. We'll get into a second game here. I'm feeling good. I feel like our team's playing like really balling out. I'm glad we made these uh, improvements on our team. So we'll get into the next game. We'll keep it rolling. All right, as we do this opening kickoff, guys, I'm just going to skip the beginning game antics. You guys already heard it. You guys already heard the spiel. There's no reason for me to repeat it. We're just going to jump right back into the game. I'm showing you guys how to defend and how to get buckets. All right, he's coming out on the single back wing tight. Uh, now, right away, I notice uh, that people are going to run out of this. Like, of course, like this is this is Madden 20. If you see someone come out in a strong set like that, they're going to run the ball. Once you stop the run, maybe they'll pass, and that's where you kind of decide where the game's at and what you're going to do on the defensive side of the ball. So if they show they're never going to pass, I'm not going to worry about my backside coverage whatsoever. I'm going to have man-to-man. -man, they can't beat it, and I'm just going to run that until I stop them. Now, if they show that they're willing to pass out of it, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated because you kind of have to guess what it is that they're going to do and make sure you kind of have the right zones out there in case they do pass the ball. So that's where the mind game comes in. This is what that first drive is about. Again, I told you guys the first couple drives, feel out drives. I'm going to see... Will he ever pass the ball? And honestly, will I make him pass the ball? Can I stop his runs? What runs is he going to go to? So he's showing me a single back wing tight dive and an eye tight dive. He's yet to run stretch. Just things that I'm noting, keep it in the back of my head. These are the things you need to be thinking about throughout the entire game. So he's coming out and split close now. Now, luckily for me, I'm very familiar with split close. I told you guys you need to note the most important uh, routes that they have in their favorite formation. So split close, I already know. PAY shot has got the crosser. Extract trail. Ooh, good hit. It's um, extra trail has the posts, mesh has good corner routes and good real routes. So just noting the most important routes that they have 
and being able to adjust for them so that you know what they're going to do on a given play. So it seems to me that he's just audibly around to different formations in order to run the ball. So we'll see. Oh, oh, make that play. Good job, boy. Yeah, so it just seems like he's just going to different things to run the ball. He hasn't shown me a pass yet. Even when he went to split close, he didn't pass. This 39 is going to be the real tell for the game. If he runs the ball, I know this guy absolutely does not want to pass whatsoever. But if he's willing to pass, then we kind of have a game on our hands. Oh, he ran the ball. Don't give him any space. Don't get, make a play. Make a play, Eddie. Good tackle. Woo. All right, so he, he does not want he does not want to pass the ball at all. Uh, oh, get back on sides. My bad. Oh, my gosh. All right, he passed. No, freak no. Freak no. He should have just kept running the ball. To the crib. To the crib. Calvin. Ah, let's go, man. All right, first play of offense. We have Randy Moss lit up. We're going deep, man. There's no other reason to do anything else. We have Moss on, and we paid for it. Let him go down 50 yards, and let him ag him. And let him ag him. And let him ag him. Yo, if you guys have Moss... Take advantage of Moss. You have to throw it first play. If you guys don't throw it, you're wasting. Dude, are you serious? I can't get it. I can't get a full game for you guys. All right, we're going to get right back into the third one. Skip the pregame antics again. We'll get it. I'll get you guys a good game. All right, so we're starting on O again. Again, same strategy as before. We're throwing up to Moss first play. We have Moss on him. Oh my gosh, he sent the whole team. He's smart. He's smart. I'm throwing it. Ah, he's smart. Gosh dang it, he's smart. He sent the whole crib. He knew I had Moss, so he sent nine. He's smart. Good play by him. So he didn't flip his nickel. So you guys know we're running that power. Oh, we got space with Bo. We got space. With Ooh, he does feel really fast with that 99 speed. So he's in 146, so I'm going to audible down. I have some runs that I feel comfortable going to against 146. We'll see if he can stop it. Oh, come on, Bo. Come on, Bo. Come on, Bo. That's no ability, Bo. He feels tough. He feels tough. No ability, Bo seems really, really good. But this Eric Dickerson's really good too with Freight Train. So I actually moved Eric Dickerson to the number one spot. I wanted to make sure that he gets his touches too. Once he loses Freight Train, I'll probably go back to Bo because Bo's probably not. Nah, Bo definitely is the best running back in the game if you don't have um if you don't have any abilities on him. So once he once Eric Dickerson loses Freight Train, I'll probably go back to Bo. But while he has Freight Train, I should be starting him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's gonna break that. Oh my gosh, he slowed me up just enough. You know he's gonna break the first tackle, so you know he's gonna be gone. Dang, man, that was close. You guys know I'm not much of a toter, but if this guy's going to sit in 146, I got to run the ball. You guys know I'm going to break down some passes soon. I'll pa I'll start passing the ball in a second, but I mean, how could you not just run the ball with Dickerson and take your free yards every time? Okay, we're going to start passing the ball here. I'm in PAY shot. Early on in the game, I like to go to plays that I know are going to beat most coverages just because I don't know what they're going to be running, wanting to run yet. Ooh, I got B. Feet down. Oh my gosh, that's on me. That's on me. That's a late read. That's, that's my fault. But... Early on in the game, I like to use what I think is going to work against most coverages just simply because that way you can get a feel for what they're like to do. You can read the coverage while knowing you're going to be able to beat it. And then later on in the game, you can go to more uh, coverage specific plays. Right here, we're going to this wheel. We got bow in space. We got bow in space. Break that tackle. Good job, boy. I'm playing this game like a normal like tournament game where like, I'm trying to show you guys the best way to be successful. So in this situation on a third and in inches... Why, why try to pass the ball when you can just go to a fullback dive with your freight chain Eric Dickerson that you know is going to break the first tackle and get yourself the first down? There's no reason to, to pass the ball on a third and inches. Put yourself in a fourth down you don't want to be in. Just take the successful play right there and make it easier on yourself. Now we're in the red zone. It gets a little bit tight. Make sure you guys have designated red zone plays that you guys are comfortable running that you know are going to be successful down here. So right here, I'm going to oh, beat him. Oh, Randy. I have plays that I know are going to work in short yards that don't need to push the safeties back deep. You guys need the same thing out of your playbooks if you guys are going to want to be successful as well. Other thing is, run the ball down here. If you're not running the ball in the red zone, like, what are you doing? This is Madden 20. It is so easy to run the ball. And with that said, I'm going to run the ball right here. I think I'm going to have some success with this off tackle. We'll see if we get good blocking. If we don't, it is what it is. I'm actually going to playmaker this run back left. I don't know what he's doing, but we're going to... Yeah, we're going to uh, we're gonna play back to this run. Run the ball to the weak side, too. Like, they have a strong... He moved his safety down to the right. He grabbed his left corner and moved him all the way in. Why would I run the ball to the right there? Yeah, oh, break a tackle. Fight. First down. Why would I run the ball to the right there, which is the strong side of the defense, when I can just run it to the left, where he moved his corner and his safety out of the way, giving me a free lane? So he's coming out in this 3-4 bear. There's a heavy blitz set. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I'm just going to max pro. Split close does a good job of picking it up. Now I'm just going to make a read. So right there couple hitches you don't always got to pick up 30 yards guys i know obviously i'm in the red zone i can't pick up 30 yards but you don't always need to block the blitz perfectly to be successful like i'll see people all the time that just will sit there and be like i can't block this blitz i can't block this blitz but why don't you take a few five yard hitches throw a couple flats and get them to stop sending eight people at you you know what i mean like if you can't deal with them sending seven and eight 
Throw five yard hitches that you know that they can't guard right off rip, just throwing and throwing and throwing them. And you'll have some success. Like there's no reason, there's no reason to just try to pick up big chunks against that when you can just block it for a millisecond, throw your hitch. And once he stops sending pressure, then you can pick up your big chunks. So I'm just gonna run fullback dive here. And there's, there's nothing you can do to stop that fullback dive. Take the exact thing I'm doing. Do the motion, everything. Run the fullback dive. If <laughs> You can't tackle Eric Dickerson. It's the, the fact of the matter is, when he has freight train, you can't tackle him on the first try. He's going to get in the end zone for you. He's not going to lose any yards. It's going to be a free seven for you. Extremely happy with our first drive. Now, he's coming out on this I form. I know, I know, like, I already know personally what run defense I like for certain situ uh, for certain formations. So for this, for this I form slot, I love the defense I just called right there. But if he changes it up, I'm just paying attention to what he's calling. And if I don't already know what defense I like to get it, I'll call different run defenses. If they work, I'll stick with them. If they don't, I'll change it up. I'll get back to a different formation that I uh, that I think will work. Just change it up. Run defenses aren't always going to work the same, right, guys? They're going to be different. They're going to be... It just the fact of the matter is, is, in Madden 20, things work differently. And one run defense can blow up one run. And the next time, it's going to get gashed. So you just got to be able to find a consistent run defense that you know is going to work. Now, this is the other thing. Like, just I told you guys... Oh, my goodness. That's got to be a pick. Noting if they're going to pass or not. So right there, he clearly shows he's willing to pass. Now, I'm not necessarily worried about it yet. Just continuing to note what they're like to doing. And uh, until he shows he can pass against whatever I'm doing against the run, I'm not going to change up. Now, if my run defense starts getting gashed by the pass, then I'll switch up. Then I'll maybe start mixing in some zone and kind of play the chess match that is mixing in the run in the pass. He's coming on the split close now. You guys know I'm familiar with this. I know what I need to lurk. Now I'm just going to be paying attention to whatever it is that he wants to do, noting it for later. So I already know PAY shot's probably coming. It's either that or extract trail, and we'll go from there. So just noting what he's going to want to do and remembering it for later. I know I keep saying the same things, guys, but it's so important. I can't stress enough that if you aren't... Ooh, stay in that pocket, baby. If you guys aren't paying attention to what your opponent's doing and noting it for later times, you're just not doing your due diligence. You need to know what your opponent's going to go to on third and ten if they went to it uh, one quarter earlier. If you're not noting those things, then you're just going to play a bad... You're probably going to end up putting a bad defense out there that's not going to work for you later, or you're just going to get lucky. So making sure you're noting those things and stay... And like, just do your due diligence. Do what you're supposed to do. Pay attention to what your opponent's doing and note it for later and keep it in that mind bank now. Did he kick it out of bounds? Oh, he's going to give me some space. Let's see what Hester can do with it. Come on, baby. Oh, oh my gosh. I actually suck. He still didn't flip his nickel with me, so I'm going to run the ball. We'll see if he can blow it up. Juke him. Ah, oh, freight train. Don't lose yards. Yes. The key to the game on defense is getting rid of freight train on your opponents, Eric Dickerson. The key to the offense is keeping your freight train. I just kept mine. Now, I'd love to just keep running the ball for you guys and toting, but I got to pass the ball. I got I to gotta show you guys some dots on offense. So he's been sitting in this cover too. Got him. Oh, wind up. Yikes. That was a long wind up from Mahomes. I, I don't mind that read at all. I just felt like that was a long wind up and that's I might be not maybe roll a little bit out the pocket and get an easy uh get an easier angle for him, but that was an open pass. He's been sitting in this cover two, uh cover two now. So we'll see if he continues to stay in that or if he's gonna like mix it up. But just go to a short yardage play. I want to make sure I pick up this first down. No reason to go to deep go deep here and risk taking a sack. Did not mean to put him out there on a comeback. Let me move him back in. I always forget when I'm when I'm motioning, uh you gotta do it before you motion, otherwise he'll he'll be on a comeback instead of a flat. But we're looking for we're looking for the corner out here or the running back wheels we'll, we'll see what he lurks he's on the he's on the corner out we got him dude what the heck that was a bad animation for bow not the best third down play i'll be honest but we're gonna keep it in we're not gonna cut it he's on the wheel we, we got the we got the post route got him let's go boy he's still been sitting in this cover too so i'm gonna look for either running back right here i've got a streak and a wheel he's gonna have to cover them both yeah we got the wheel there we go that's the animation i wanted on that third down i don't know what the first one was looking for this corner out right here we're looking for this corner out Got him. Got him. Feet down. Not. Let's go, baby. Got to know what you guys can do against certain coverages. I knew I had a deep corner route. He had literally sat in cover two for the entire drive. Refused to get out of it. You know what? I decided to take advantage of it. We used a deep corner route. And got over the cloud route. Got cloud flat very, very fast. Easy touchdown for us. He's audible down on us from his split close. I know all about that. What we're going to do is just try to make sure we can blow it up. And uh, play the best run defense we can. But if he's going to keep doing this, he's going to tone on me consistently. I'll get out of this 146. I'm not going to be stubborn and sit in it. But I actually think that we can do a decent job against it. And uh, until he shows he's really going to gash me, I'm going to sit in this 146. I'm actually shocked right now. He went back to this I form slot. He just had a good run out of out of uh, out of. I'm actually really shocked. He just went back to this I form slot. He just had a really good run against 146. 
out of his eye form. Oh, he's audibling back. Smart man. Okay, I see what he's doing. That was actually a really smart play. Dang, that was actually super smart. Crap, dude. <laughs> oh, he doesn't. Yeah, nothing open. No, nothing open. Dion, no. Dion, what? Dion, what? He was in man. He just beat him in playmaker. That's crazy. That was crazy. I cannot believe that. Wow. I don't know how he completed that ball, but that was actually a really, really good play to audible back from the I form into split close. People don't usually do that, myself included. And actually, it was a really good play, but I think we're going to do a good job of blowing up this run. I don't think he's going to consist with like super success with it, especially end of half. I stand corrected. Wow. Well, that could not have been a ter more terrible end of the half. I'm going to have to change on my defense. I told you guys I wasn't going to be stubborn. If he kills me in the 146, which he clearly did, I'll go to something else. We're going to have to find a different defense. He's coming out in 1462. Obviously, I could audible down and run to it, but it's end of half situation. I want to try to get some points. Oh my gosh. What what I, I'd love to know. I would love to know what zone that is. You guys, if, if you guys if you guys don't watch me play very often, you guys know I lowball that slant versus pretty much any zone in the game. So maybe he maybe he has something different there. I don't know. But that definitely that definitely surprised me right there. So I'm coming out of nickel normal now. I'm not gonna allow him. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I manned him up. What? Gosh, man, that's killing me. I manned him up. I was ready for that. I was in I was in nickel normal just to stop that bubble screen. But I guess Lawrence, I mean, excuse me, Sean Taylor didn't do a great job right there. But that's okay. If he wants to keep doing that, that's okay. Well, we're not going to give up anything big here. We're just going to try to make sure we end the half right. At least up 14-10. We started off this, this half really, really well. But we've kind of struggled down the stretch throwing a stupid pick and giving up an easy touchdown. But if we give up seven here, that'd be a demoralizer. Three is not the worst. We have our spy. We'll make sure we're on that. Oh, my gosh. That fit? That fit? Wow, dude. What a terrible end of the half. Well, you guys are going to get a close game. I was afraid that it was going to end up being a blowout. And you guys weren't going to get to see a good one. But, shoot, I turned this one into a game real quick. We seriously could not have ended that half any worse, like, at all. So, we're going to try to just figure it out this half, man. I mean, he's been killing me now that he's audibling down to his runs and coming back up to split close. We got to find something that's going to be able to stop both of them. And we should be okay. But he's, okay, he's going to a stretch here. Nothing doing. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Nothing nothing really scared me with that run right there. I'm not to sit in this nickel normal, unfortunately, until passing downs. Once we go to passing downs, I'll feel comfortable going to the 146. If he wants to run the ball on a third and 10, that's okay. But until then, we'll sit, we'll sit in this uh in this nickel normal. That's okay. Pull this guy down. You don't want to get beat on a coverage beater. If you guys are getting beat by cover three beaters, deep half your outside guys. Oh my gosh, he's not going to a deep half. He's not going to a deep half. What is this guy doing? There we go. Yeah, put your guy in a deep half, and that way you don't get beat deep. So we're on that. Throw it. Throw it. Throw it. Oh my gosh! Oh, I run that play. I know how good it is, but he threw that with the wrong timing. <laughs> get after the QB, man. We need some pressure. We need some pressure if he's gonna sit in this thing. And uh, I don't really like sending pressure too much out of nickel normal. Yep, he's not gonna get anything. Nope. I'm gonna have to spy him now, though. Oh, fumble! Got our spy in. We're not gonna let him run with his quarterback. We're gonna make him make reads. What's he got going for him? Come on. Nothing there. Send my spy. Throw it. Oh my gosh, he was throwing it. I saw it. You guys stole it. He was right here and he was looking right at me. I saw it. Man. I'm glad he ran that play though. Just like I showed you guys. He was trying to run a cover three meter. We had a deep half out there. Nothing doing. Now he's going to this post play. I'm on the wheel myself. I'm on the wheel myself. Nothing was there. The other guy was going to pick it otherwise. To the crib, Tillman. No. The other. If he, if, if my spy didn't pick it, the, the mid he was picking that ball. That was not getting completed. I really don't know why he intends on sitting on this 146. I should be able to gash this with the run. Oh no, I lost my X Factor. The only reason I got tackled in the backfield right there is because I didn't flip my play, guys. I, I told you guys before, if you have a right-handed quarterback, you need to run the ball to the right and vice versa. Oh, good catch, boy. You need to be able to make sure you're handing the ball off with the correct hand. But if they're right-handed, they like to hand the ball off with their left. If they're left-handed, like a Michael Vick or Steve Young, they want to hand the ball off with the right. I don't know why that is. Uh, but it's the case. It's been the case for like three to four years. So like, I want to run this dive to the right since I have Mahomes. That was my mistake trying to run it to the left. I thought I'd probably still get good enough blocking. So I just did it. But that's just me being stubborn. Now I did move Bo back. Like I told you, ooh, that bow looks really good by himself. Like I told you guys before, Eric Dickerson is better when he has freight train. But once he loses it, he's not better than this bow. This bow has 99 speed. He's got like 95 truck. He's got high break tackle. I have no problems just audibling down to this dive and working with him, even though he doesn't have an ability. We're have space here. Come on, baby. Let me get loose. Let me get loose. Oh, my goodness. I don't want to take that hit with Tillman. We're going to look to get out of the pocket here for our PAY shot. Here we go. Oh, we got out. We got out. Dashing Deadeye. Come on, baby. 
Let's go. If, if you guys are using Vic, you guys are pretty much tripping for not using Dash and Deadeye. I feel like Dash and Deadeye is so very good. It, you're just, if you're not using it, you're missing out. To not have to be able to take your hand off of RT and just be able to throw the ball wherever you want. It's such, it's such a great thing, man. And it really, really is taking a lot of pressure off you and making sure you guys have time. You can just roll out and make the play without having to worry too much. Now, I'm going to actually audible down to this dive. I actually like the stretch run better against this set. But since, but since I'm in the red zone, I don't really want to use, lose yards. I just give myself a chance to fall forward with Bo Jackson. I'm going to audible down to the dive again. Again, a second and goal, three yard line. There's no reason to try to lose yards right here. Just again, just keep, keep moving down the field, gain a couple. You don't have to gain all five at once. Got to gain a few, give myself a chance to get in the end zone here. Now I'm going to put Bo here. Again, I told you guys, Bo is better. Bo is better than Eric Dickerson when he doesn't have freight train. So since I lost it, I'm going to try the fullback dive with Bo. Hopefully, he just needs to probably break one tackle, guaranteed, and I'll be in the end zone here. But maybe not even break a tackle at all. So we're just going to run this fullback dive, see if he has defense for it, and we'll evaluate on fourth down. Come on, baby. Punch this thing in. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's... What? He definitely fell in the end zone right there. All right, he clearly had defense for that, though. So we're going to actually call something different here. We're going to mix it up. Now, I probably... I played good defense in this game outside of like a 45 second span before half. I played good defense. So I'd probably kick three here. I'd recommend this is a chaos coaching. I'd recommend that you guys kick. However, I want to go for it. So I'm just going to go for it. Now, I gave you guys the good advice, but we're going to try to punch this thing in. Come on, baby. We need some good blocking. Oh, there's no way. I'm going to audible. I'm definitely. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to see. I wanted to see if he'd move that guy back out. Is that, I didn't think he could get that receiver, but he moved him. So we're going to run the ball here. Good block. Touchdown, baby. Now, what I was doing, I was messing with him a little bit. You guys saw him grab that outside corner, right? So when he grabs that outside corner, I was just going to throw a uh, throw an out route to Randy Moss out there. Because clearly, if there's no zone there, he can't get out to an out route, no matter what coverage he's in. But out of do a pass, you saw him. If you guys want to rewind it, you saw him click back onto the guy and move him a few yards back left. And he actually might have stuck on him for the whole play, which caused him to not have a user to stop the run. And I audible back down to the run because I made him move him. I made him change his defense a little bit. And we were able to punch it in. Now we have a seven-point lead going down to the wire, trying to finish this thing off. Now the goal on this drive is not to give up anything big. I just want to make sure I'm not giving up any big runs. So I'm not going to sit in the one four six. I don't want to give up any big passes either. So I'm not giving up the bomb. You guys saw I put the deep half out there out there. We're just going to see what we can do. Let's see what he's calling. He's MPAY shot. He's not going to have anything. I didn't spy though. That's my fault. That's my fault. If I had a spy out there, he doesn't gain any yards right there, but I'm not mad at nine. We got Dion in the deep half again. We're not giving up any bombs, guys. Don't give up any bombs here. Make your opponent work, please. Make your opponent work. Oh, wow. That was almost a crazy throw. I thought I was going to get there. If that was accurate, I don't know if I get there or not. All right, man. Here we go. Big play. I have this guy. I have this guy back in the deep blue now, so I don't have to lurk deep. I'm just going to worry about everything myself. No way, right? No way. No way. Eddie Reed. Oh, my gosh. Finish the game off, Eddie. Again, guys, we're not giving up anything deep here. Oh, nice flat. I was going to lurk that myself, but I wasn't I wasn't set up yet in my spot. Dang, man. Good play. Good play. Good play. Nice baby dot. I'm cool with it though. He's taking a long time to drive. He's taking a long time to drive. If you make him work, that's what that's all you want to do on this last drive. If you end up giving a seven, like clearly you want to stop him, but you gotta make him work. You don't want to give up anything easy and give yourself uh give yourself a chance to lose the game. Like if he's gonna score, it's gonna be on the last play of the game. And uh it's gonna be him working his butt off to get there. So we'll see how it goes here. I'm gonna be working the flats myself. I'm on that. Nothing really doing for him. Send that guy. We're on everything. Throw it. Go ahead. Ooh, he was trying to be greedy. He was trying to be greedy. Don't act like that, guys. If if you don't have anything open, throw the ball away. Because if he took a sack right there, that almost kills his drive. You don't want to be in a second and 20. Second and 10 is a lot better. No reason to get greedy. Throw the ball away. Live to fight another down. I'm making sure I'm not giving up any bombs, guys. We're in a cover three with deep halves. Nothing's going to be open uh, deep. So he's going to have to throw the ball underneath and make himself some good reads. I'm just going to keep spying him, too. I don't want him to be able to run with his quarterback. Nothing doing. I don't think they will get over the cloud. Dion, Dion! Oh my goodness. I just need to get these picks and bows. I'll finish the game off. Man, guys, it's not every day you guys see me get out of 146. This guy's done a good job this game of really giving me some trouble, keeping me from being able to do what I want to do. But we're on him right now, man. Come on. Biggest play of the game. Now I'm going to go back to the 146. I told you guys, if I'm in a passing situation, I will go back to 146. I'm not worried about the run. If he wants to run the ball, and he gets plus 19 yards. All the power to him, man. I'm cool. I'm cool with running 146 right here and trying to get a stop. All right. What's he got for me? We're on that. Nope. Swat that. Swat that. Oh my gosh. He actually caught it. He rolled out of bounds. Bro, what? That was crazy. Now, the reason why I was able to play that post is because you're able to play sticks 
on uh, long downs like that. So it was plus 10 yards. So playing six gigs, the guys play deeper. He played his post. He's going to quit out, man. That's a great, great win. I'm glad we got a really good gameplay for you guys. I thought I was about to blow him out. I messed around before half. That one was on me. I gave up a big run. I threw a stupid pick. Um, and then I let him get another touchdown before half. I made a game that was 14 nothing, probably about to be a blowout into a really close game. But he played well. All the power to him. You don't see people get me out of 146 very often. So good job by him. Really good gameplay overall. I feel like I gave you guys some good advice. If I didn't, I apologize. I try to help you guys as much as possible. But that's it for the video, man. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. But take it easy. Peace.